Hey guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Right now as you can see the baby fry tank is empty. I've got all the stuff in a bucket here. I've got clean water here ready for them. And I'm actually going to do a deep clean where I'll clean the glass, um, vacuum all the waste. I'm going to take out the sponge filter and rinse that in some aquarium water because that's also getting quite dirty and kind of do a really big deep clean for these guys because I think I'm going to be keeping them in here for another month um, at most I think and then afterwards they're going to be moved into a bigger tub I could technically move them now because they're large enough to do well uh, the only thing is it would be hard to film them of course in one of these tubs so the best plan at the moment is to clean up this tank, keep it nice and clean and pristine and in turn uh, I'll be able to keep them in here just a little longer. So this is how I take the water out of the tank. What I do is I run in a aquarium airline tube. I pin it with a clip at the top and then I have it pressed firmly against the sponge from the sponge filter. So it's pulling water through the sponge filter. This way I don't have to worry about fish getting sucked up. And at the moment I'm having it go in this little container for a while. I'm just going to fill this up halfway just so the plants don't dry out. And then the rest I am going to put in this bucket right here. But this is an easy way for me to be able to do other things while the aquarium drains and not have to worry about um, watching the little babies. I did get a suggestion to use an air stone but when I tried that the water was just um, going exiting the tank way too slowly. This at least is not the fastest. It does take a few minutes but it's very effective and this way I don't have to worry about the fry. And then once I get kind of halfway in then I'll actually siphon the bottom and clean the bottom. Uh, also use a little toothbrush that I use for cleaning my aquariums to kind of gently scrub the glass and we're gonna make this really nice also this is a great opportunity to actually see and count how many babies I have because they can't really hide so once I take out the sponge filter to clean it in the aquarium water I'll be able to really see all the little babies so we're gonna try to count and see how many baby bettas we have so I filled up <clears throat> Uh, this container with tank water so that way the plants will be totally fine and now I'm filling up this bucket with the rest of the water and this is also the bucket I'm going to use to rinse out my sponge check out this one this baby right here is actually been changing colors and becoming lighter so this might be a cellophane or maybe this might be a koi baby who knows I also have other ones that uh, are getting actually really dark. Let me see if I can see any. There's one big one that's super dark. So it's kind of very interesting to see how all these babies are changing colors. So this is my little aquarium toothbrush. I only use this for aquariums and I can gently um, rub the glass kind of clean the glass. I don't want to make crazy big movements because I don't want to injure the fry or hit them or anything. But this is especially good to reach down here. I'll clean all the glass. You could also use a um, magnetic glass cleaner. But I just feel like this is so much easier.
To help me see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a net to gently gather some of the duckweed. place it down here. Now the reason I'm placing it down here into the same aquarium water is just in case if I caught a little baby by accident in the net and didn't see it, baby's gonna go into the water that's the same temperature and the same parameters as the aquarium so it won't be shocking or traumatizing or terrifying for the little baby. Although I try my best to be very careful and not catch any babies. You know, some people would throw out the duckweed and the water lettuce, but I actually like water lettuce and duckweed, so I'm keeping it. I don't have to get all of it. This will just kind of help me see what I'm doing. Oh, and this is an indicator that has reached the end. And now I can take out the filter, clean it while the water is clean in here, and then I'm going to siphon the rest of it. So now I just do this. the first time that I uh, actually oh there's some there's a mothball stuck to it it's the first time that I am actually cleaning a sponge filter since I put this tank together to spawn so with the babies growing and the bio load increasing this is a good time as ever kind of clean everything up and then I'm gonna actually put this in here for now just so the bacteria um, doesn't die let me get some of the air out so it sinks a little more there we go so we're just gonna hang out in here just for a little bit and then, this is kind of what's happening over here. So I'm going to get the siphon going again and siphon the bottom and clean the glass a little more. Okay, now I'm siphoning up the bottom. I'm not really looking where I'm filming because I'm actually looking where I'm siphoning because I don't want to siphon any babies. I've had a good lucky streak of um, not siphoning any of them so far. I don't want to break that streak today. So sorry if I am not pointing the camera the right way. It's just easier to look at what I'm doing. Now I'm not going to try to be perfect and siphon everything. Because I don't have to. Okay, now that the water level is dropping and I'm getting kind of close to the babies, they don't have a lot of room to swim away, I'm going to do the rest of the tidying up with um, a turkey baster. I'm going to dump the water in here. This allows me a little more precision.
also don't dump this water. Leave this water for the next couple hours. The um all the uh, fish poop and waste will settle at the bottom and you'll be able to see if there's a baby in there in case you uh, did suck any of it up. I don't think I did, but you know, better safe than sorry. If you did, you can always, if it's still alive and made it, you can put it back in your tank and it might be okay. So, I don't know, I'm usually very paranoid and really cautious about this and really careful. Okay, so the tank is kind of clean. Um, I'm gonna start putting in water. What I do is, I take some of the clean water. Am I about to put the filter in? I mean, and the filter and the heater in just a little bit. So, but what I do is, I do this and very gently put the water in. As you can see, it doesn't really disturb the fry much. And that's what you want to do. You want to be very gentle with these little babies. And I actually learned this trick from watching Inglorious. Betas on YouTube. That's how she pours water in for her little fry. So that's how I do it too. I think there's enough water for me to add in the heater and the filter. Okay, so I have the sponge filter back in. I have the heater in. I do like to keep the heater not entirely centered, but a little bit at an angle and centered instead of right against the wall. I feel like that uh, causes better heat distribution around the tank because if you had the heater just in the back then this side is going to be warmer and then this side is going to be colder by having this kind of at an angle and a little um, sort of centered doesn't have to be exactly centered the tank will more evenly be heated the other reason why I have the heater laying down flat is because when I do these large water changes I don't have to usually remove uh, the heater and usually don't want to have the water, I mean, have the heater exposed to air and not be covered in water while it's still on, so I'd have to constantly unplug it. So this just kind of makes it a lot easier. So I filled up the tank almost all the way up, and the baby bettas are exploring all the space. Interestingly enough, the way this looks right now is how most breeders keep their um, tanks especially for raising fry. Technically, that's really all you need. You've got filter, you've got heater, and water, and babies, and maybe some snails to help uh, clean the bottom of the tank, but mostly, predominantly, people, that's what they'll do. This is actually very practical and easy to clean and easy to maintain, and it's also easy to see all your babies right away. But, in my case, since I'm making a whole YouTube series about these little baby bettas, it, to me it made more sense to try to make a tank that was more natural looking and more appealing to look at. Uh, so besides being able to see all these baby bettas, it would be prettier to look at. Most breeders don't want something that's pretty to look at, they want something that's very practical, easy to clean, easy to maintain, that does the job, and that makes sense. That's the logical thing to do. But if you want, you totally can uh, decorate your tank with some uh, driftwood and add some plants And I think it's nice for the little baby bettas. It gives them places to hide and explore and they have a like, really nice natural environment. Having a lot of plants also helps keep your uh, water parameters pretty good. And yeah, I think it's definitely worth its pre to look at. So it's definitely a preference. So I'm starting to put things back in. I scrubbed the um, driftwood. I'm going to add it in. 
and I added a new almond leaf and I'm holding it down with a rock and then the old almond leaf is right here and it's being held down by a little rock and I wanted to show you guys how I use this to hide the heater so as you can see it's actually pretty visually appealing to look at it gives the snails as well as the baby bettas a different surface to swim up against they could hide under the leaves little bacteria and microorganisms will grow in the leaves that the baby bettas can nibble off and if you want to keep your tank simple don't want to add any more this might be one way to kind of very minimalistically uh, decorate your tank so it still kind of looks visually appealing without just a filter sitting back there I mean the heater um, another thing is I believe that adding almond leaves for the baby bettas is important even after breeding and spawning because um, the tannins from the almond leaves are have a lot of uh, health benefits for bettas and one of those is they are antibacterial so if they're uh, are any little scrapes or bruises that the babies get from bumping into something or they start to kind of get sick the tannins will kind of help prevent any infections and diseases along with the fact that I do add a teaspoon of aquarium salt to my water as well this prevents uh, velvet from uh, happening so these little preventative measures uh, will help keep your babies healthy. Downside is, you know how right now the water is nice and very clear, the tannins from the leaf will make the water yellow, which is not very visually appealing to people, but I think you get used to it, and because you do water changes daily or every other day for baby bettas, the tannins go away quite quickly anyways. But uh, what's going to happen is this today and overnight this tank will fill up with tannins which will be very healthy for the babies and even as I'm doing water changes there will still be some tannin being released into the water even though it might not be as concentrated because of the water changes but I still think it's worth um, adding. Now obviously I don't use up too much leaves because I don't expect there to be a lot of tannins so I'll just what I'll do is I'll put in a new leaf and then I'll wait till these leaves eventually start to break down. Once they start to get very brittle and start falling apart, I actually move them down here to my Daphnia uh, tank where they can continue to break down. But they do get very messy, so once they break down too much, I remove them. But this one is still doing pretty well. Plus, I think it makes a tank, um, especially a tank that has bare bottom, it looks more natural with some leaf litter just as it would be in the wild for these baby bettas. So there you have it guys. I put all the driftwood and the plants back in. Interestingly enough this um, uh, jungle val actually rooted itself into one of the leaves and that's what's holding it down and that's kind of how I ended up setting up this tank. I have this cool little cave area down there where the little babies can hide and kind of hang out in the shadow if they want but for the most part they're just swimming all around because they're just they're pretty social and curious and that one seems to be having swim bladder issues but besides that all the other betta seem to be doing quite well. Now I am going to give them some rapashi gel food and feed them and that's pretty much yeah, I'm falling over things uh, pretty much it I hope that you enjoyed this video if you are a new breeder and you only have about one or two tanks one or two batches of fry that you are breeding at the moment have some fun decorate your tanks uh, make it really pretty to look at if you want to if you're a really big breeder I assume you know it would probably not make sense to have multiple tanks like this because it would be difficult to ma maintain multiple tanks but if you only got one or two why not make it pretty make it visually appealing and I bet your fish will enjoy it too so if you like this video as always be sure to give it a thumbs up in the comments down below let me know what you think of this little aquascape that I did over here it's not really an aquascape but I call it an aquascape I think it looks Nice. I put some thought into it. I don't know. It's 
entertaining to look at. And if you already haven't, be sure to subscribe to this channel. I put out three videos every week. I also have a bonus channel, Creative Pet Vlogs, with bonus videos that you should definitely check out and subscribe to as well. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you on Friday. Doo -doo -doo.